Okay, guys, today, again, we are doing Big Idea 3, which is energy changes the states and interactions of matter, and we're working on essential question two today. How do I describe endothermic and exothermic changes in matter? So I want you to write this down. Not word for word necessarily. Please abbreviate as you need to. Um, but when we look at endothermic and exothermic um, reactions and we want to classify these processes, we want to watch how the temperature of the surroundings changes. And then we just talked about um, that with the bell ringer. We want to really pay attention to the temperature of the surroundings. So if the temperature of the surrounding is cooling, that means our matter is absorbing that heat. Or if it's heating up, then it's releasing. Watch how the temperature of the surroundings change. Okay, so we're going to define endothermic and exothermic. Whoops. Whoops. Okay, so an exothermic process, so basically what you just typed in your bow or your doc, it's what you have in your notes too. Um, exothermic releases heat and heats up its surroundings. Okay, so write it. You don't have to copy it word for word from the board, just you can copy it like we did for the bell ringer. Um, it releases heat and heats up its surroundings. And then we have endothermic, which is exactly the opposite. It absorbs heat and cools its surroundings.
everybody have what's on the board? It's okay if I switch the screen? Okay, so guys, what we have here are a couple different um, graphic organizers for you that we'll, we're going to use to explain um, phase changes and how they are endothermic or exothermic. So we're going to start on, well, on the front, I guess, let me talk about the front first. Um, the front talks about definite, just definitions, okay, of the things that we're going to talk about here, are things we've already talked about. So if you look at the top, the first thing that it mentions is kinetic theory of matter or the kinetic molecular theory, which is what we talked about yesterday. Remember that our first essential question was how do I use kinetic molecular theory to describe matter's behavior in each state? So we talked about how if you add heat, you add heat to matter, the molecules are going to move faster and faster, right? And so we're going to talk today about which of those, which um, phase changes absorb heat or are endothermic, which would cause the molecules to start moving faster and faster. Okay, so it talks about those, it talks about the phases of matter, which we've already discussed too. And then at the bottom it gives you the descriptions of the different phase changes, okay? So we are going to talk about, we're going to fill out the phase change concept map first. So just going solid to liquid to gas and what they all the different phase changes are, okay? So the first one, going from a solid to a liquid, is melting. go from a solid to a liquid that is melting. Then we're just going to kind of continue around here. If you go from a liquid to a gas, this is going to be evaporation or vaporization. You'll see, you can see both of them. I'll typically write them both on everything. You only have to write one or the other, but evaporation or vaporization. And then if you go from a solid to a gas, this is sublimation, okay? Now each of those, sublimation, um, vaporization, or melting, are all absorbing heat in order for these phase changes to happen. So these are our endothermic phase changes. Okay. Our endothermic phase changes are melting, <coughs> vaporization or evaporation, and sublimation. Okay. These are our endothermic phase changes because they are absorbing heat. So melting the solid to a liquid, vaporization liquid to a gas, and then sublimation, which is a solid to a gas. Okay? Those are your endothermic. They're absorbing heat in order for those phase changes to happen. So then if, we're if we do the other three phase changes we're going to talk about then are going to be our exothermic phase changes, and they're going to be the ones that release heat. So if we go from a liquid to a solid that's freezing, If you go from a gas to a liquid, that's condensation. And if you go from a gas directly to a solid, that's deposition. And those are our exothermic. Condensation, which is a gas to a liquid, um, freezing, which is liquid to a solid, and um, deposition, which is gas directly to a solid. All right, so if you look down at the next graphic organizer, then I really like this one a lot. You'll see it a lot, too, um, as we can take notes. So we continue to practice these things. 
Okay, so what this is is a phase change diagram that shows you how heat is increasing, that's so how temperature is increasing, and then how heat energy is increasing. Okay, so think about if we're increasing the temperature, we're absorbing heat, right? So as it moves up and across, you're adding, increasing the temperature and adding heat energy. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk. We're going to start with our endothermic phase changes. So they're going to be going up the graph. So if you go from a solid to a liquid, this is melting. Okay. And the phase change happens right at the end of that plateau. So all the way across here where the temperature is stable, it's not moving, it's not going up anymore, the solid is melting, 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 and then it's a liquid right as the temperature starts to increase again. Okay? Then going from a liquid to a gas, this is um, evaporation or vaporization. And same thing on this one, it's the liquid is, it's a liquid, it's a liquid, it's vaporizing, 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 now it's a gas, okay, right at the end of that plateau, okay? And then down at the bottom, number seven is the one that represents from <coughs> a solid straight to a gas, and that is sublimation. And so what's happening, guys, our temperature is increasing, our heat energy is increasing, so the matter is absorbing that heat. So in big letters, these are our endothermic phase changes. Okay, going up the graph are our endothermic phase changes. Now we're going to come back down the graph now. So if we're going from a gas to a liquid, this is condensation. Okay, and kind of opposite of our endothermic, it's a gas, it's condensating, it's condensating, it's condensating. Now it's a liquid. Okay, at the end of that plateau where the temperature starts to come back down, that's when the phase change happens. Okay, if we're going from a liquid to a solid, it's freezing. And same thing, right at the end of that plateau, that's where it's going to become a solid. <coughs> there's not a spot for it, it's technically like there's not a box like there is for number seven, but deposition is going straight from a gas to a solid. So you want to add that one in. And coming back down the graph, temperature is coming down. We're losing heat energy because it's being released, right? So these are our exothermic phase changes. 